and you're watching Book TV on C-SPAN 2. From time to time, we go to universities throughout the country to talk with some professors who are also authors about their books. Today, we're on the Duke University campus in Durham, North Carolina, and joining us is Professor Henry Petrosky. Professor Petrosky, what, what do you do for a living besides uh, teach at Duke? What, what is your background? Well, my background is, is engineering, mostly academic, but about 20 or 30 years ago, I began to write about engineering. First essays, but increasingly books. And uh, since then, that's been my principal occupation, is writing about engineering, lecturing about the books about engineering, and uh, generally doing a lot of thinking about engineering to uh, feed the book habit. What, <laughs> what is engineering? Well, that's a good question. That was really what mo motivated my first book. I had taught engineering. I had practiced as an engineer. I had been registered as an engineer. And if a neighbor or an interviewer asked me what is engineering, I really didn't have a good, good answer. So I thought the best way to uh, develop an answer would be to write a book. I've found that writing is my best way of, of thinking and understanding things. So my first book, uh, working title was What is Engineering? And I, I had to admit I didn't go into it with any preconceived definition or understanding because I, I really was confused. And I found that when I pressure other engineers, it, it's a very confusing subject. Uh, some people confuse it with science. They say engineering is just a branch of science or it's applied science. But it's, it's a lot more than that. And one distinction between science and engineering is that science studies what is, the given universe, things that have already been invented and manufactured. But engineering creates new things. Engineering solves problems for which there is no solution that you can take off, off the shelf. So engineering has a large element of creativity to it. And uh, that distinguishes engineering from science or technology uh, as an abstract, let's say. So uh, engineering to me, after writing the book, uh, if I had to give a single sentence definition, I would say engineering is the avoidance of failure. The avoidance of failure. The avoidance of failure. Most people would say engineering is building things. It is building things, but we want those things to be successful. In other words, we want them not to fail. How do engineers design things that are successful, that, that work the way in, they are intended? It's by thinking a lot about failure, thinking a lot about what could go wrong. We're seeing that with the plane that went down over somewhere around Malaysia, we don't exactly know where, there are so many things that could have gone wrong with that plane, uh, and there's beginning to be talk about uh, why didn't, why wasn't this anticipated or why wasn't that anticipated. Well, that's good engineering. Good engineering of a plane is that uh, you don't let it get lost. You have safeguards built in, uh, even if there's, uh, there are people involved that, that want to uh, bring the plane down deliberately, there should be features in the design of the plane that prevent that from happening. And we're seeing some of that. We're seeing that even though the plane uh, went off course, there were ways of tracking it that uh, were not uh, in the control of the pilot. Well, th that takes us to your most recent book, To Forgive Design, mm -hmm. Understanding Failure. Mm -hmm. And when you say forgive design, what do you mean by that? Well, one of the first uh, things that we often hear when there's an accident, a failure, such as a plane crash, is, oh, it was a design problem. Uh, the designers didn't think of this or didn't think of that. But m almost always, when things are looked into more carefully, more deeply, we find that there was something else. It might have been a pilot error in the case of an airplane, or there might have been poor maintenance in the case of a bridge that collapses, uh, all sorts of other things besides design. So uh, this, was, uh, this book is a defense of, of design in that regard. It's really a bookend to my first book. My first book was called To Engineer is Human. And in there I say that this concept of failure is what defines engineering or the avoidance of failure, I really should say. And at, at the same time, the essence of engineering is design because we're talking about creating new things as opposed to just studying things that exist. So, from an engineer's perspective, can you anticipate everything that's going to happen? That's what the engineer is 
supposed to do. But as you can imagine, it's uh, not obvious that that can be done. Uh, experience uh, helps engineers enumerate what could, could go wrong. Uh, even new things are generally made up of old things. And we know how old things work. We know how they fail in particular. So it's not as daunting a task as it might seem at first. Professor Petrosky, you teach civil engineering here at Duke, correct? I'm in the civil engineering department, that's okay. right. Okay. What is civil engineering? Well, civil engineering, it depends on how far back we want to go, but until about the 18th century, all engineering was associated with the military. So the term civil engineering came into existence in the latter part of the uh, 18th century to distinguish things like public works from military objectives harbors, roads, and bridges that are for civilian use as opposed to military use. That simply is what civil engineering remains to be today. Originally, civil engineering encompassed all non-military engineering. But as the 19th century developed railroads and so forth, the uh, different branches of engineering that we know today came into existence, such as mechanical engineering and electrical engineering. Originally, these were all under civil engineering, but all specialties eventually, you know, grow into their own field. In To Forgive Design, you spend quite a bit of time on bridges. Yes. Why? Well, I'm, I, that's what I know most. For, that's the short end of it. Uh, also, I think bridges are among the most visible aspects of engineering, especially when we're talking about failures, what could go wrong. When I was writing this book, uh, the Minneapolis Bridge collapsed. That was the one on Interstate 35 that just suddenly collapsed under uh, it was rush hour traffic. Uh, I sometimes called, you know, a bridge guy. Uh, I like to, when I lecture, I like to use a lot of bridge examples. They're, they're photogenic for one thing, so they make for good slides. But, but uh, generally, I, I consider the bridge as really representative of, of any engineering uh, creation. So, the Minneapolis Bridge, for example, mm -hmm. what happened? What went wrong? I would say we still don't fully know. We know certain things that, that went wrong. You see, when a bridge collapses like that, all the evidence is really in a big tangle. So, there are a lot of theories, there are a lot of hypotheses about what went wrong. And we read about those in the paper, we see stories about that, those on TV. But if we're going to talk about things in a rational way, in a scientific way, then we have a hypothesis, we have to test the hypothesis. So if somebody says in the Minneapolis Bridge case that this is what went wrong, it was these gusset plates that were too thin, well, how do you prove that? How do you, how do you prove that? You can summon all the evidence and you can argue in words, but you can't rigorously prove one particular uh, cause. The one way you might be able to prove it is to build uh, rebuild the bridge exactly as it was, but that's virtually impossible because we don't know what imperfections were built into the bridge. We don't know what Im uh, uh, improper materials might have been used when the specifications called for one material and another material was substituted. There are all sorts of problems uh, like that. So the sh my short answer is, well, we, we can propose all these ideas and they have been proposed, but what what ultimately happened, uh, we maybe will never never know. It it appears, as with a lot of these uh, failures, that it was a combination of things. One was the early design did have some deficiencies, and that though these gusset plates, which hold a lot of the beams and girders together, were thinner than they should have been, but that doesn't mean that they were the cause of the failure, because after all, that bridge stood for several decades without collapsing. Usually design uh, fa failures happen right away. Uh, the question of maintenance uh, uh, is, has been, been blamed, and that's, that's probably uh, true, that there were uh, some of the gusset plates began to bend, for example, and the, just visibly out of shape. Uh, they should have been paid attention to and, and repaired or re been repaired or replaced. That didn't happen. Uh, there, there, there are causes that uh, get, get buried in the, in the evidences is what happens, and the evidence 